Hello, welcome. Here we are. Uh, ever closer we creep into spring, it feels as though I think we've passed a certain mark, haven't we, where sunset now is after 4.30, something like that. Uh, so not that I've got notches carved in a broomstick or anything like that, but uh, I do kind of count the days as we get closer to spring. Uh, thank you for joining me uh, live. Those of you who are watching later, hello as well. Uh, we're keeping on with this theme of balance, balance not only physically, but also emotionally and cognitively. And these are all ingredients that are kind of encapsulated in the movements that we do. So let me start. Um, let's do a movement that I don't think we've done before so much. Uh, again, seated or standing. Um, we're gonna take our right hand. Let me take my glasses off. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll fall off. Uh, and we're going to push overhead. At the same time, I'm pushing down with my left hand by my hip. So I'm push, push, pushing, and then I'm turning to look over my left shoulder. Feels like a yawn that you might do on the side of a bed. Unwind, and then let everything relax. And then let me let this person in. Who have we got? Excuse me while I do this. It's Ellie. Okay. <laughs> Give her a wave when she comes in. <laughs> Here she is. Hello, Ellie. Welcome. Uh, we're just starting. Uh, so left hand pushing overhead. Push, push, push. Right hand pushing down by the hip. And then we're looking to the right as we turn. That's it. Oh, and then unwind and then just let both hands relax like so, okay? If you feel confident with your balance, you can bring your feet, prosthetic or otherwise, a little bit closer together. Just create a smaller base of support. Here we go again, right hand pushing up, left hand pushing down quite strongly. And then we're looking to the left again. And then unwinding as we do. Should feel quite a strong movement. Here we go, left hand pushing up, right hand pushing down. And then I'm looking to the right. And then I'm winding, I think of it there's almost that kind of intuitive movement that you kind of do when you yawn a bit like that. <laughs> okay, if you're feeling confident and comfortable, you can bring your feet a little closer. Again, if you sat down, a little bit academic about this, but if we're stood up, feet a little bit closer. Again, as we bring the base of support together with our feet, it requires a bit more work uh, to balance. So don't go too far if it's gonna put you in jeopardy. Here we go, right hand, pushing with the left hand, turning to look to the left. Oh, man, unwind as we do so. Fab. And again, left hand pushing, right hand pushing down, looking, turning. To the right. Oh, there was a clunk. <laughs> Do you get clunks? I get clunks. Nothing happens, just I get a clunk somewhere in my body. Uh, okay, if, again, you feel confident, you can bring your feet even closer, maybe even together. If not, that's okay. You're in charge. But again, if we bring the feet very close together, now we've got a very small base of support. Here we go for the last time. Right hand up, left hand down. Thinking tall as we turn. And then unwinding. Ooh. And then the last one with the left hand going up, right hand pushing down. Turning to the 
Right. And then I'm winding. Ooh. And then coming back. There you go. I'm wobbling quite a bit. So I'm going to open my feet. That feels better. And then just have a little bit of a shake. Quite a strong movement. An older Dao Yin movement, as I say. To me, kind of has that feel of a big kind of stretchy yawn. Um, something you might do sat on the edge of your bed. Okay, let's exploit this wider base of support by going as wide as you feel comfortable so that we've got sufficient room to just transfer our weight from one side to the other. Just to get hips, knees, ankles mobilized, even in the prosthetic ones. I'm not sure if motion is lotion applies to prosthetic knees and ankles. Maybe it does. I need to ask my prosthetist. But we're just shifting weight. Not just shifting weight. Helps us get the brain tuned in, so to speak. You might not know that your brain is tuning in, but that's kind of what it's doing. It's taking on visual data as the eyes scan going to and fro, the inner ear, the vestibular system is processing where the head is in relation to the center of the earth. And then we've got all of this sensory feedback from muscles and joints and skin precious sensors, all telling us where we are in time and space. So we've got three systems of balance operating all at the same time. Walk those feet in. And if you're standing up with me, we're just doing little transfers of weight now from one side to the other. I sometimes think of it as that kind of movement that we do to relieve pressure when we've been stood in one position for too long and we begin to get achy or sore, particularly in a socket. So here we're relieving pressure, but we're shifting weight from one side to the other. And again, because we've now got a smaller base of support, our brain has to work a little bit harder because we've only got a little bit of latitude to go from side to side. So again, this is a good little routine to get into, if you can. This is a little daily morning routine for me as I get my coffee ready, for instance. Just shifting weight, getting a feel for how I feel in myself, in my joints, and just generally kind of getting my brain used to the fact that I'm going to be moving around. Okay, let's slide the right foot forward. So I've got a hip width stance. I'm imagining that I'm on rails. I'm going to slide a foot forward. Now I know for people with um, above knee amputations, this is tricky, it depends on the knee unit that you have uh, and all kinds of other stuff. So it might only be a very small movement that you've moved your foot forward. But again, we're just transferring weight and that kind of shifts us into a bit of a diagonal direction. Something that we might use if we were in the kitchen, reaching for a cup. So again, I'm just moving forwards and back or on the diagonal, just exploring how things feel. How's my balance is a good question to have in mind. And then I'm going to bring that right foot back. doesn't matter how far it's traveled. And then I'm going to do the same with the left. Again, it might be just a little way along the rail, or for some people it might be a bit further. And again, I'm just shifting from one side to the other. And again, one of the things we might notice is that we might have more range of motion on one side compared to the other. A very familiar theme that we explore is this relative difference or comparative difference between left and right, both in weight shift and in rotation 
as well. So very simple movements, but actually really useful ones. Again, very useful for us with lower limb amputations. Bring that left foot back. Back to those little side to side motions. And I'm going to ask you, and you can use support if you've got a handy wall or a handy dining chair, um, to see if you can linger longer. There's a little bit of alliteration for you. Linger a little bit longer on each side. It might only be a second or two. But can you just bring your weight across, hold for a moment, and then go back the other way? Not as easy as it initially sounds, again, particularly for lower limb loss to actually do a single leg balance. That's basically what we're doing. Even if we've got the other foot down, we've got lots of body weight going down one side, and then we switch to the other side. In essence, this is what happens when we walk. There's a little bit of sway. And then we move a foot forward and we walk. What if I was doing a, a workshop with students where we explore walking and gait? I kind of start off here with this as a little bit of an explanation. Okay. Let's just go back there because there comes a point when it all begins to feel like we're on a ferry. <laughs> and we don't want that. So let's do part the air from the sky, okay? Holding a ball. We've got the bottom hand coming up over the top, pressing, and we're pushing. Again, like the first exercise, only now we push on the center line. And then we bring the hands back together. And then the bottom hand, this time the opposite hand comes up, and we push on the center line. We create this S shape almost. So again, what's this to do with balance? Well, again, part of Tai Chi and Qigong is mental imagery as well. So I said balance is not just that physical balance. We've got emotional and cognitive balance as well. So as we do this movement, we can maybe think about the name, parting the earth from the sky. And we could think about creating space for ourselves momentarily, breathing space. We might hold that space for a moment and then just let it go very softly. Slow everything down. And then once again, we're going to create some breathing space. We're going to Give ourselves some headroom. We just take that on board, but then we let it go as well. We don't hang on to these concepts. Again, that's a very kind of ancient Chinese way of thinking about things that we have things momentarily, and then either we move on or they move on. And we kind of let them go. Sung. So as I create some space, I enjoy that headroom and that breathing space. But at the same time, I also know that I've got to let it pass. Because in doing so, it enables me another opportunity to create some more space. So again, that's where... We sometimes get the idea of Tai Chi as a moving meditation. We have a theme or an idea in mind as we do a movement. Sometimes that's obvious, maybe from the movement name, but in other contexts, it might not be. Let's bring those feet back in together and do our little side to side. And just for a little moment, how long? Can you linger, even with a toe down, 
or a foot lightly down for support, how long can you linger on one side and then go back the other way? Again, this is my little morning coffee routine in the kitchen. And because it's early morning, sometimes I'm using support. Worktops are great for that. But again, it just kind of gets me into my body. Gets me used to the idea that I've got to load one leg, then the other. Good stuff. Okay, let's do some more rotation. I'm just moving a little bit further forward and we'll do wise owl. And we'll first of all, just do our usual exercise of turning to the right, lifting the hands and arms, and then just turning back to the center. And then the same on the left side, lifting, turning, and then turning back the way we can. So here's the cue. Try to do it as effortlessly as you can. Try to use the least amount of effort to make both turns in their respective directions. Try to be as energy conser conservation aware as you can be. So you're really paying attention to how you balance on your feet or legs and you're working as gently as you can with your hands and arms, not lifting too high and just turning within a very comfortable range of motion as we do so. Okay, we can progress this movement. A bit more of a challenge. We're going to kind of attempt a little bit of a step back. So you remember those rails that I mentioned where we can slide our feet back a little bit. And again, it might only be a very little bit that it slides. And for other people, it might be a bit further. You pick a side. I'm not going to tell you which. I am going to start on my right, but it means I'm going to slide my right foot back along its rail. I'll decide how far. And then I'm going to turn to the right and explore just how that changes things. Does it give me more range of motion? Does it jeopardize my balance? And then... In order to turn to the left, I've got to bring that right foot back to where it started and then do the same with the left. It now needs to travel back, maybe a bit, maybe a bit further. It's all up to you. And again, I do the same little turn. And now I've got something to compare. I'm just going to do the same. Bring the left foot back. Transfer weight, send the right foot back and do the same, turn. And the first thing that I realize is that I've got lots more range of motion on the right compared to my left. It's not going to be necessarily the same for you, but I want you to kind of just take notice of how each of those respective movements on the right and left feel for you. You might have no difference. Again, that's okay. We're not making a judgment. We're just taking notice again in that non-judgmental way as we explore that range of motion. Okay, I'm on my left leg. I'm going to do this one more time. Coming back, and you may have noticed that you had to do little kind of micro adjustments of your respective foot 
that may have been different on each side. Again, that's okay. Uh, certainly in this realm, where we're looking at Tai Chi and Qigong, certainly in terms of its adaptive role, uh, there's no hard and fast rules. Uh, sometimes in Tai Chi, it can get very pernickety, i.e. you will be instructed to have your foot at 45 degrees, and it's almost as if you're in a maths class and you think that you should have brought your protractor in order to get that angle just right. Uh, but here, we know that we're working uh, with ourselves and we know also that there's going to be a lot of adaptation in terms of how we move in relation to that. Uh, sometimes we just call this self-organization. So we're going to explore that idea. And I think Kate might remember this exercise from some years ago where we're going to pick up some coffee cups in an imaginary kitchen. Uh, it's a little bit unusual because the worktop is circular and we're in the middle. Okay, so we've got a circular worktop. All around us are 10 coffee cups. There isn't one at 12 and there isn't one at 6, but there's coffee cups all at the respective number of the clock face. So one o'clock on the right, heading round to five, and then picking up on the left, seven to 11 on that side. Uh, and we've got a little table in front of us where we're going to put our coffee cups, so to speak, okay? So all we're going to do is reach with the right hand and do a little pace with the right leg to go to number one, to reach that coffee cup and actually reach for it and bring it back to our little table like so. And then we're going to go to two o'clock. So I'm not telling you how to do the movement. I want you to kind of find the solution that fits your needs, not anyone else's needs, best. Okay, so collect your coffee cups. Here I go to three o'clock in the most balanced and easy way that you can. If that means that you need to take lots of baby steps as we go to four o'clock, then do so. Don't feel as though you have to do everything in one fell swoop. I'm going to go to five o'clock. So I've got to turn, look, make sure I'm reaching for that coffee cup and bringing it back to the center. We miss out six. We pick up at seven. So now we're on the left side. Things may be different. Just take note of how that feels as we go to seven o'clock to bring our coffee mug back. And again, we may find that we're using different movement solutions as we go to each respective number. Here I am at eight o'clock, coming back to our imaginary table in the center. As we get to nine o'clock, we might be comparing. Okay, when I did that to three o'clock, I did it this way. But now I'm on this side, I'm doing it in a different way. Again, here's 10 o'clock. And then finally, here comes 11 o'clock and we've collected all our coffee mugs or cups. But I'm hoping that we've also maybe learned something, that we've probably adopted some strategies in order to do that, the meet our needs. Uh, that's why I haven't told you how to do that. <laughs> I've just said, here's a coffee cup. And we all know how to pick a coffee cup up. And, and we do that all the time, don't we? But we will need to do it in different ways. Okay. So these are called Tai Chi steps, by the way. I'm just using this visual analogy to facilitate our Tai Chi steps. We did it with the same arm, same leg. We can do it with the opposite hand to the leg. So right leg on the right side, left leg on the left side, but use your opposite hand. So we're going to have all our coffee mugs arrayed around us, and we're going to use the left hand this time to go to one o'clock with a little pace maybe with the right leg. And we're just going to do the same thing. 
And just take notice again. How do you organize yourself to do that? How do you find a solution to the task of now reaching with the opposite hand to the leg? Okay. Here I go to four o'clock. Just work your way around in your own time. Ooh, that's a little wobble for me. <laughs> Here we go to five o'clock. Ooh, very wobbly now. I'm back safe. I'm picking up at seven. Don't worry if you're a little bit behind or a little bit ahead. So it's the right hand now on the, on the left leg lead as we go around. And we're coming round the clock face to pick up our coffee mugs. It's like we work in a cafe. Phil's Cafe. There we go. I'm getting to 10 o'clock. So I'm coming round. And 11 o'clock. It's definitely easier for me going forwards than it has been going backwards with each of those movements. And I'm back. I'm safe. And I've collected another round of coffee cups so as strange interesting as that exercise might be it helps us understand tai chi steps that sometimes we do a tai chi movement and it's the same arm same leg we sometimes do a tai chi movement like brush knee where it's the opposite hand and leg uh, and depending on our circumstances like me when i got out of hospital and i couldn't use my right arm. Uh, I had to do everything with my left hand, uh, even when there was stuff on the right side. So again, I had to learn to organize myself in my environment to do so. So these are interesting exercises. This is stuff that I will do at home. I've got some little plastic cones and sometimes I'll set them up in my kitchen. And although it's not circular like this, I'll go through the motions of picking up and putting down and swapping places these little cones. Again, it's might only I might only do it for a few minutes, but it helps me understand my body a little better and that plays out in day-to-day -day life. So let's do a movement called brush knee just to illustrate that movement. So we're going to be making a pace with our left leg, but we're sweeping our hands to the right. And it's as if the right hand holds a tea tray. Okay, more drinks. And this left hand of mine is just kind of in a supporting role, pointing at it. You remember the rails? I'm gonna slide my left foot forward. Again, might be a small movement, little movement. And then I'm just pushing that right hand forwards. There's the opposition. And I'm just imagining that my left hand finds a table for support and I've just arrived in that position. A bit like pushing a door. And that's brush knee in Tai Chi. And then we're going to just bring everything back. And then let's lift the hands up to the left side. This time it's the left hand that holds the tea tray. It's the right leg that slides a little bit forward on its respective rail. And then I'm going to push the left hand forward and my right hand finds the tabletop. And there we are in brush knee. Perfect. And then we come back to where we started. We're going to explore that movement a little more over the next coming weeks, stepping not only forwards, but also backwards as well because it's a really good movement but I thought I'd just introduce it now you can then revisit the video and maybe have a little practice over the next few days if you think that you would like to do that but I've got to be aware of the time and realize that I've got to let you go as well so let's just pack all of that away so we've spent this time together as I just bring my hands up to close things down and fold and pack things away. Really exploring 
some of the nuances of balance. Again, physically, but also emotionally, cognitively. There's certainly been a cognitive load as we've had to think our way through some of those movements. And there may well have been an emotional load in terms of your response to certain positions or tasks and things like that. Uh, and all of these are things that are worth just paying notice. Uh, again, with a kind of kind and compassionate gaze, so to speak, just to be curious and interested in how we move in the world. So I hope that's been interesting. Uh, I hope you are keen to kind of explore a little more of this uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, but I need to come forward, bring the recording to a close. And if any of that has piqued any comments or questions, please do fire away. I'm happy to hang on if you wish.